Today we're going to be working on the graph of sine, cosine, and the secant and cosecant function. So I'm going to be using a clear sheet of paper to graph our cosine function so you can see it better. And we're going to start with the graph of sine 3 theta. Now to graph any trig function, it will start with finding the amplitude and your period. So let's say we're going to graph a sine graph. A sine graph, graph will always have y equals a sine b theta where a is the amplitude or the height of our function or the trig function and b is your period now the formula for finding the height is just the absolute value of the whatever value of a is and for the period we're going to be using 2 pi all over b so if we're going to be graphing the sine function, which is given by y equals sine 3 theta, we're going to be working on finding the height, or a. And in this case, the height is simply absolute value of 1, which is 1. And the amplitude will be at 2 pi all over b, which is in this case 2 pi all over 3. Now in working with the graph of a trig function and in any um, trig functions, it's always easier to work with the degree measure because it's more or it's something that we can visualize better than the radian. So we're going to convert 2 pi, 2 times 180 divided by 3 into degrees. So we have 120 for our period. So for our first period, it will be from 0 to 120 degrees. So we're going to start working on the axis that we're going to be using for our graph. So from here, we'll just draw a vertical and horizontal line. And one period is going to be at 120. And you're going to partition your graph into four parts. So we have this half of 120 is 60 degrees and half of 60 degrees is 30 degrees and 3 plus 60 or 30 plus 60 is 90 degrees so this will be the partition of our first function from 0 up until 120 and for the height of the graph we only have one unit so this let's say is 1 and this will be our horizontal and vert um, horizontal axis or asymptote of our sine function. So to graph the function sine 3 theta, the graph of the function of sine behaves similarly and it always starts at the center. So we'll have the point at the center or our guide starting at the center and then we're gonna go up to the top of the amplitude which is at 30 degrees and then go down to touch 60 degrees and then 90 degrees and 120 degrees so it will create a smooth curve like so so this is the graph of our function y equals sine 3 theta and this is just one period and if you want to add more periods you're just going to multiply 120 by 2 and then construct your functions over and over again because we know that the um, graph of a trig function is going to be periodic so this one is just for one period now let's go ahead and find the graph of problem number two which is y equals 4 cosine 3 Theta. This is function number two. So to graph the function, we're going to be looking for a, which is we know is just four, and b is two pi all over b, which is here is three. So notice that the period is just the same as our first function, so we'll just use 120 degrees and proceed to our graph of the cosine function. So since the graph of a trig function behaves similarly, 
we'll just draw a vertical line and a vert um, horizontal line and we'll have our first period which is 120 degrees take half of it is going to be 60 half of 6 is 3 so we have 30 degrees and 30 plus 60 is 90 degrees so this is now our graph of the cosine with a height of 4 so we'll have a taller and deeper graph of the cosine function. Now the behavior of the cosine function is certainly different for sine. So if for sine we started at the middle, for cosine we're going to start at the very top. So the maximum height is at 4, so we're going to start here at the top then we go down to the middle to the bottom to the middle and to the top and we're going to construct a smooth curve so the graph of our cosine function will look something like so so this is the graph of 4 cosine 3 theta so sine function starts at the middle cosine function starts at the top but the behavior will still be the same so that is for problem number four and for problem number three we're going to graph y equals two sine theta all over three so to graph this function we're going to set up the value of a which is two and b which is 2 pi all over b and 2 pi all over b we have one third so we're going to simplify this complex fraction so we know we can simplify this by multiplying um, our function by 3 because if we multiply this by 3 and this by 3 this cancels out and we are left with 2 pi times 3 or simply 6 pi so 6 pi is the period of our sine function and if we're going to change this into um, degree 6 times 180 6 times 180 is 1080 and we're going to use 1080 for our degree measure so just like what we did a while ago we are still working on the same axis but the maximum now is going to be at 180 degrees and we're going to divide this by four equal parts so 180 divided by 2 is 540 so that's half of it and half of this is 270 and 270 plus 540 is 810 degrees so this is now our period and we have a height of 2 so 1 2 1 2 And now we're working on the graph of 2 sine pi over 3. And we know that sine starts in the middle, then on the top, then in the middle, bottom, and top. I mean middle. So the graph of the sine function will be given by this graph. So this is the graph of 2 sine pi all over three and now we're going to graph the last three function we have here in our exercises and we're going to start with number four and for number four we're graphing y equals three cosine pi all over two so a is three and b is two pi all over b which is two pi all over one half so to get rid of the complex fraction we will multiply both sides by 2 so this cancels out and we have 4 pi and since our 
period is 4 pi, which is easier to divide into 4 equal parts, we're just going to use the radian measure here. And the radian measure is 4 pi. Half of 4 is 2 pi. Half of 2 is pi. And pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. With a height of 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, So since we're working on 3 cosine pi over 2 this time, so we're going to start on the top, to the middle, to the bottom, middle, to the top. And a smooth curve to connect the function. And this is the graph of 3 cosine pi all over 2. Now for problem number five, we're going to be graphing y equals one half secant theta. Now we know that the inverse of secant is cosine, so cosine inverse theta is equal to secant theta. So we're going to relate our graph to cosine. So just like what we did with the cosine graph, we need the value of the height or the amplitude, which is one half, and the value of your period, which is two pi all over b. And b is just one, so you have two pi all over one, or simply two pi. Now we're going to use the degree measure. So two pi is just two times 180, which is equal to 360 degrees. So we're going to be using the same set of information in graphing our secant function. So just like what we did on the graph of a cosine function, we're going to draw the x and the y axis with partition at 360 degrees. Half of it is 180. Half of 180 is 90 degrees, and the sum of 90 and 180 is 270 degrees. And we have height of 1 half, so if this is 1, we're going to be working on the middle for the height of our cosine function. Now for the cosine function, we know we're going to start here at the top, going to the middle, to the bottom, to the middle, to the top. And we're going to graph our cosine function really quickly. And in this case, this will just serve as our guide in graphing our um, secant function. The x-intercept is going to be our vertical asymptotes or our secant function, so the x-intercept will be the vertical asymptote, and the peak of our function is going to be the minimum and the maximum point of our graph. So this is the graph of secant theta. So this is the peak, and that is the graph. So this is y equals one-half secant theta. So every time you graph your sine and I mean secant and cosecant function, you will always draw or it will always help you to draw the inverse functions so it will serve as a guide to find your asymptotes and the minimum and the maximum point of your function. Now for number six, we're going to be working on two cosecant two theta. So six is y equals two cosecant to theta. So to graph this function, we are going to look for a, which is 2, and b, which is 2 pi all over b. And b is 2, so we have 2 pi all over 2, which is simply pi or 180 degrees. So just like what we did on the graph of secant theta, we're going to be using the graph of its inverse and the graph of the inverse function of cosecant is sine. 
So we are going to be seeing the sine function this time. So sine inverse is equal to cosecant theta. So our period is 180. Half of 180 is 90 degrees. And then half of 90 is 45. And 45 plus 90, 45 plus 90 is 135. And the height of the function is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. And again, this will serve as our guide in graphing our cos, um, cosecant function. So since the inverse is sine, we'll start at the middle, going up, going middle, down, and middle. So this is the graph of the sine function. And the asymptote will still be at the x-intercept of the sine function. And now for the graph of our y equals 2 cosecant 2 theta, it will start here at the peak. So this will be the guide asymptote and the asymptote. So this is now the graph of our inverse function for sine and cosine, which is secant and cosecant. And this is how we graph our trig functions.